what we want to do here is calculate probability of sum of normals. We're going to do part one. You can have a go and then watch the presentation. I'm going to do this in two stages. First, I'm going to solve it straight and second, go over with commentary. Okay, so we've got the first step is set notation. What we've got here is we've told uh, something about number of newspapers sold in a day. So let's say XI denotes the number sold on i day, and they're five days, so let's say i is one to five. Then we said told that they're normal. Moreover, they're independent normal, so I can put an i there for independent normal. In part one, what we want is probably that fewer than 2200 are sold in five days. So that can't be to do with x. So I'm going to set up some other notation. So let's say s is the number newspapers sold in five days. And how is s related to what we know about them sold in one day? Well, it must be it's the sum of them sold in each day. So it's the sum of these x's from x1 to x5. Then x is also, s is also a random variable because it's equal to a sum of five independent normals. And there's a result, guys, that says the sum of independent normals, finite number of independent normals, is again normal. And here's the central result in purple. We're all going to apply today. So with two variables, say x is normal, y is normal, those are the means and variances. And they're independent, then sum of those two normals, independent normals, is going to be again normal. New mean being the mean of these two, variance being the sum of the variances. Notice here, guys, the notation here. These are the population parameters. I've not put here x bar or s squared x, all right? Because the parameters of the random variable, they're the population ones. And this thing we're going to say a bit more about later. But for now, I want to apply it. So the rule says, and it's only for two, but we can do it equally for five, or any finite number. We just add the means. All right, so we're going to do 450, add it to itself five times. So it's five lots of it. The variance is it's saying like we add them as well. So it's five lots being the same value. So just do five lot times the variance. Okay, so those are the values. And now we're back to the routine problem. So statement of the problem, probability that number sold in five days is less than 2200. Right, I standardize and I look it up and I do it by computer. And that's the exact value. All right, let's show you how I did it by computer. I use this thing called R Studio, which is free you can download. All right. Okay, show you how I do it. Like that. Okay, I create that. What is the value? It's that. Okay, well, what's the area to the left of that fig figure? So I want to probably do that Z is less than that. So I just go like this. I get the answer. Painless, right? There. That's the exact value. But you might be watching this in the distant future where that is routine, but right now I'm making this video in 2018 and in homework and uh, exams still using tables. So how do we do it using old fashioned tables? Well very painfully we use the, this is Z table here and there's different formats for the Z table so let's say I'm going to use the format where it gives you probably that Z is less than some positive value. Okay, this positive value here is given to two decimal places in the table. Then we've actually, we don't have two decimal places here, we've got several, right? So let's just have a look at what this kind of, get an idea of what we're looking at here. So we've got a Z is less than this value A, and it's a negative, so I'll put it over here. And we'll look at the area to the left is what we want. Obviously, that's the answer. That Since that's the answer, this is not to scale. That must be way to the left a bit more, okay? Because the area under the, this comes to 1. Okay, well, since the value of, in the table only gives me positive value, and I've got a negative value here, I kind of recast this so it's positive. How? Well, using the idea of, you can see it's sym symmetric about zero, I flip it on that vertical axis, and it's the same as looking at this area above negative, op the opposite sign of this. If I'm using this table, it gives me the area to the left, not to the right of that point, but it's, that's not a problem because since the area comes to 1, I just do 1 minus this area to the left will give me the shaded region. Okay, so let's transfer that over. I can pick the closest value to this in the table, which is 0.8 minus 0.89. I do 1 minus the area to the left, that positive opposite sign of this guy here, with positive value. Look it up in the table, gives it to four decimal places. Quote. Uh, I could present this as my answer. But I know this is only approximation because that's to do decimal places, that's the actual value. So this is only approximation. 
Now this work depends on how your professor pre presents, you know, whether, whether they actually care about the approximation. I could go one step further and say, okay, let's pick the next value closest to this. Well, in the table it's minus 0 0.9. And I do the same thing. And then I say, like the probability is between this and that. And you can see the exact answer here is between this and that. So this is a matter of choice. Uh, in real life you don't use tables like this. So that's why we don't really fuss too much about the approximation. But listen to what your professor says. Um, these uh, tables, right? If you get a bit, uh, if you're a bit rusty about reading the tables because there's different formats, I've got videos on showing you how to read all formats of the Z table. Right now, let's go back to the beginning. Right, and this time I pray the computer is not going to crash. This is like the eighth, ninth take. Right, okay, commentary. First notation. Notation. Get it straight because it's um, very common to see students. You know, x basically means statistics. Then you stick an x here, stick an x there, anywhere where there's random variable, stick an x. Right, well, can you see these two things are dis distinct? You can't call this x and that x. So make sure your notation actually means something. Another thing is incorrect application of this rule. So what I have here is you might add the means, but you don't add the variances. Another thing about the variances here is like you might go five times the standard deviation and square that entire lot. That's wrong because that's not what the rule says. The rule says you add the variances. Now more about this variance. This here is the variance of x plus y. And this only holds, the, it's, not, it's just equal to the sum of the variances of x and y, if the x and y are then dependent or they're uncorrelated. If they're not, that's not the case, then there's a more general expression and that's shown and proven in uh, problem 35. So far routine. Final thing. Right, this is to get your mind stretching a bit, so this is where you need to actually think. Question. For solving the probability that you've got fewer than so many n newspapers sold in five days, why don't we just... Isn't that equivalent to kind of finding probability that in any one day is less than a fifth of 2200? Here you might want to, you should pause and have a think because it's a serious question. Well, the answer is we should kind of think about a thought, do a thought experiment. Uh, say to understand the problem, say two days. In two days, then you're telling me like let's suppose you want probability that number sold in two days is less than ten papers. Then your method says that in any one day it should be less than half that, so less than five papers. Well, that doesn't work because in one day it could be less than five, but you didn't say about the other day, and the other day could be like more than 20. So that doesn't work. But you're not done yet because then you say to yourself, no, that's not what I meant. You could say like, if in both days it's less than five, then over the two days it's less than 10. Ah, well, that's something different. And that's true. That's true. And then you will say, and you work it out by doing probability like using probability A and B is equal to probability A times probability B, A and B independent, and they are in this case because you're told the number of sales over the days are independent. So then you say probability of a fewer than 10 sales over two days is probability of fewer than five sales in a day squared. Does that work? Well, let's think. Well, suppose in one day you have a sales of less than three, and in the other day you have less than seven. Then over the two days, I think you'll agree you have less than ten. But you have precluded that because you have said that um, you've not allowed that you can have probability of sales le uh, greater than five. Because I used less than seven there. Okay, and that still works. So in other words, that method you've said, although you, it shows you thinking, it doesn't actually work. It's a different uh, problem. Um, but those things are very good because they show you understanding. Right, okay, at least think about the problem. Making mistakes means you kind of, and, and uh, getting the answer means you kind of see where you go wrong and you've understood something. Okay, let's see if you understand this. Last comment. Number of papers sold daily. Oops. 
and is normally distributed. Now, do you kind of have a problem with that statement? Number of papers sold daily. Well, what I know about number of sold daily is that what values can it take? 0, 1, 2, 3. In other words, discrete integer values that are non-negative, right? What do you know about values that um, a random variable T take if it's normally distributed? Well, anything the real line, so minus infinity to plus infinity, any real number, right? So these don't match. So how can you go saying the number of newspapers sold daily is normally distributed? Okay, so this really is about using a normal approximation to some discrete random variable. You've heard like in basic stats course normal approximation to certain some discrete distributions like normal approximation to the binomial, normal approximation to the Poisson. In this case, what could, could we kind of guess what this would be? Number of papers sold daily, well a natural one for that is a Poisson, because Poisson is a number of counts within an interval, right? Well, if we're, so then you're asking yourself, are we doing a normal approximation to a Poisson? Well if we are, the mean should be equal to the variance. Well if that's standard deviation, if we square that, we should get the variance. But if you square that, do we equal, get that? No you don't. So it's not doing a normal approximation, I mean to a Poisson. But whatever it's doing guys, you can see that is is normally, well, is approximately normal because you know this is discrete and so it can't be normal. So all it can ever be is that this is an approximation to whatever this is. And this guy is discrete. I don't want to make too much of it, but just to point out to you guys, you know, you've got to think about what this and that actually is.